Welcome back to See and Free Studio. This is Jen Longyan. I'm super happy to have all of you here today, especially because it's a chance for me to catch up with a friend I haven't seen in over seven years. Jean Martinez is co-founder and CEO of Winnin, with clients like TikTok, AB InBev, Coca-Cola, and Globo. Winnin empowers creativity with data. We're going to have him tell us all about it, but I love what he has on his website. The team is passionate about our work. We dream big, and we always seek to act and think beyond any box, which perfectly sums up Jean, who's been named top 30 under 30 in Brazil, one of the 50 names that expanded creativity by Wired Magazine. Hey, Jean. Really? How are you? Thanks for inviting me. I'm really excited to be here to catch up. Looking forward for this conversation. Thank you all. I'm so glad you joined us and you're joining us all the way from Brazil. How is everything there in Rio de Janeiro? Oh, good. You know, now things are getting better. Uh, I'm sure you all know Brazil uh, struggled big time during uh, the pandemic, but now uh, we are getting back on track. So things are, are, are better now. And I can complain, all good from my side, uh, family's doing well, uh, business doing well, so all good. <laughs> and well, how, how is everything in California? My, Los <laughs> Angeles is one of my favorite cities in the world. Well, I have to have you come out here and hang out with me. Um, all doing well, you know, we uh, haven't had uh, any major fires around this area, but it's been a little crazy summer as it is every summer here, uh, but we're doing really, really well. And I'm so glad to be able to connect across the globe in moments like this. It's, you know, it's a time when you really want to connect with people and this opportunity through this podcast has been great. Um, you know, Jean, I would love for you to tell before we jump in to tell people just a little bit about women. Like, what do you all do there? And uh, and how are you helping a lot of these big corporations? Uh, sure. So we is a software company. Uh, so our core business is a technology uh, platform that we call Winnie Insights that helps uh, brands, uh, media companies, top creators to understand through data what their audience really want to watch uh, when we're talking about content. And with those uh, cultural insights in the beginning of the creative process, they create uh, better content, content that is more relevant for society, for people uh, that build engaged audiences and help those businesses to thrive. So this is what we do and, and the, the passion uh, to create this company all started, uh, you know, as you know very well, uh, on my previous years, uh, uh, before becoming an entrepreneur as an executive at Coca-Cola and before that in, in creative agencies, where I could see uh, how painful it was for marketing organizations worldwide to create relevant stuff for consumers, relevant stuff for people. Uh, and this is why we, we, we created Winning. <laughs> now we, we launched it in Brazil, the software last year in March, and we're growing super fast. And now we, we'll be launching USA in the next month. So uh, also excited to introduce it firsthand to everybody a little bit of what we're doing. That's great. Well, we're going to be very happy to have you here in the U.S. And um, that's where I got to know you is at Coca-Cola. And I always appreciated, one, your creativity, but your innovative spirit and and your focus on the consumer and the customer and what they want. So I, I'm loving that you took all of that and you created a business from it, Jan. And, you know, that's amazing. So um, I, you know, I started this podcast. I took a little bit of a break in between roles and the, the purpose was just to make people happy, um, bring them together, uh, help have them kind of reconnect with themselves and what makes them, uh, you know, driven and gets them up every day and makes them want to get going. And even in times when it felt hard to do that. Um, and so I talk about people having a unique, special and different themselves and their purpose. And so I would love to hear from you. What do you think that is for you? What's that thing that fuels okay. you? Amazing question. And I always tell uh, to everybody that, you know, uh, 
my passion has been very, pretty much the same my, during my entire career, which is trying to master the science of creativity, to understand how you can uh, create amazing things uh, in a consistent way. Uh, so this has been always my passion. And then I realized at a certain point in my life that my purpose was to uh, empower uh, this creative capability in people. So helping people to create better things, amazing things. So this really fulfills me. Uh, when I think about, you know, uh, young folks that uh, are born in a, in, a, in a context that is not without privileges, and, and when they realize that they can change this through their creativity, using you know their creative potential to create amazing content that people really want to engage with uh, and by changing their uh, reality they also change their family reality sometimes their their community reality uh, uh, and, and helping somehow this uh, creative environment to flourish uh, it's something that uh, really drives everything we are doing and all this is started uh, in my childhood, uh, I was very lucky to be born in a family that was talking about creativity since my, my, my early days. So my parents, they used to have a company in Brazil. Uh, the name of the company was Creative Children. And it was a, a, a publisher focused on creating uh, books, uh, animated uh, movies, uh, toys, so on and so forth, designed it to nourish this creative potential in, in young kids. So I was very lucky to be on that place. Uh, and, and soon in life, I realized, you know, how powerful creativity is and, and, you know, how democratic it is. It's something everybody has and you can learn, you can learn how to nurture this. So this is what we do. <laughs> That's fantastic. Well, that's the question I was going to ask you is when did this emerge in you and, and you it, you said, you know, as a young child, um, how how do you do that? You know, for children, uh, Jean, and you have uh, children of your own. How do you spark that creativity? I mean, are there are there things you recommend people do to you know help see that they have the creativity within them, that they have the ability to problem solve through creativity? Are there are there ways that you would recommend we could all? Absolutely. Uh, I have two kids. Uh, Sebastian now is nine years old. My best friend and, and, and Clara is five years old. Also my best friend. So uh, and, and I've been experimenting a little, a little bit around this, uh, taking the learnings from my parents uh, and seeing, you know, how this works in today's uh, society. And basically what I've learned at the end of the day, it has a lot to do with build the confidence uh, in, in, in kids that they can experiment, they can, they can, they can do stuff, they can, they can try, you know, and that, that that's, can sound like a little bit cliche, but, uh, you know, very often when you're a kid, you know, people tell you that you, you can do it, right? So, uh, or you're, you're not good on this, or you're, you're not good on that, uh, and you shouldn't do this, shouldn't do that. So. Uh, once you, you, you nurture like a, a different mindset, like and there's this book that talks about like this notion of growth mindset that, that I, I really enjoy. So when you create an environment that allow this to happen, uh, it really impact the, the, the creative output, not only at kids, but also in enterprises, right? Uh, when a company, when a team uh, really feel like they can do stuff, they can experiment, they can try, this, this uh, nurtured their curiosity around, you know, the different ways they can solve the different problems that are out there. Uh, so I've learned like, this will be uh, my, my best advice to start uh, creating an environment that, that uh, make creativity uh, flourish. Yeah, that's fantastic. Well, you mentioned that business has been booming quite a bit recently and, and growing. I mean, are you no 
certain kinds of problems or challenges where companies and businesses that you support are wanting to experiment or wanting to create solutions? Is there anything out there that you're seeing trends around where people are trying to figure it out? A bunch of stuff. <laughs> Actually, also to, to explain a little bit better exactly the focus of the, the, the technology we develop. So uh, we are six years old company and we launched our software in the market uh, March last year. So we are 16 months old software company at, at the end of the day. Uh, and, and because we spent many years developing the technology, uh, which is a technology very focused on helping those companies to create more relevant content. And content is specifically in the online video space. So we, we found out that, you know, all those huge brands that are our clients, like AB InBev, Coca-Cola, Danone, like those big media companies, uh, TikTok, so on and so forth, they are spending a lot of energy, a lot of money, a lot of uh, effort uh, creating content for people. Right? So they are acting as creators uh, in terms of content. But uh, the vast majority of what they are creating is not relevant for people. It's just content that is not adding value to people's life. Uh, and it's just interrupting people. Uh, and this doesn't need to be the case. So I've learned it back in the days at Coke, and we did that uh, without technology, but through methodology, that uh, you can change this. If you can re-engineer those content factories, those huge companies to reinvest this money in things that are relevant for people, that solve people's problems, that uh, have a, a role in the different, uh, you know, uh, spaces in society, that has a positive effect in so many levels uh, that we are doing. So we are focusing on this. And, and, and answering to you, like for me, like the major trend that I see from the top uh, brands in the world and companies we work with is this notion that they, they understand that at the end of the day, if they are not relevant for people, uh, you know, they won't get anywhere. So I think more and more uh, society is understanding the importance of being relevant. And being relevant means, you know, understanding your, your, your uh, audience pain points, you know, their passion points, understanding how you can play a role in it, how you can help them uh, by doing things that matter for them. And I think this is lovely. When you when you help those companies to, you know, invest that that huge amount of energy in those type of things, uh, you, you really create a huge impact in society and leave a big legacy. So yeah, I think this will be the major trend we see out there. Well, I, thank you, Sean, because I, you're right. And, and trying to figure out relevancy in the time that we're all living in, too, right? What a challenge for, for these companies to try to figure out what, what's relevant now. I mean, because the world has kind of gone through this major reset um, as far as what's, what's relevant in a world when we're all in lockdown versus out there, you know, um, buying and buying out in, in, in traditional kind of outlets and um, in different ways. So I, I think that's wonderful. I mean, have you um, noticed, uh, you know, a, a major or shift in, in that kind of journey towards relevancy or, or you know, grappling, uh, grappling uh, with this issue since the pandemic hit? 100%. Uh, we can clearly see that uh, the need to be relevant, it was accelerated, right? Because uh, just the context um, presented a situation where if you if you if you if you are not really relevant for people, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, you won't be there in a few years. So uh, it was accelerated, and then as you mentioned, like um, the challenge is that there are so many things that are relevant at the same time that uh, you know the 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 the, the secret we, we found out to together is. Uh, first, try to understand, you know, all those different nuances uh, in society, because there are not only one culture out there. There are multiple cultures, and they coexist, and they are dynamic. They are liquid, right? So they are in movement. 
So if you look at, at the name, uh, like the, the, the mom's universe, right? And, and, and there are so many different things going on out there. They are really different versus what's going on uh, in, the, in the shooter game uh, community, which is quite different versus what's going on in the farming community or, or in the, on, the, on, the, on the sports community and so on and so forth. And so on and so forth. So uh, we've learned that at the end of the day, the best way for companies to find their their role in society and find a territory, a space in culture where they can add value and play a, a, an authentic role is, is by, by mapping all those nuances, understanding all those differences and seeing which are the ones that you can really impact. So let me give you some examples. So uh, AB Bev, it's a global client of us. And when the COVID pandemic hit it, uh, winning was kind of the, the the global thought leaders in terms of giving the direction for the different brands in the, in the portfolio. So what those brands should be doing in this new context. And we map it out, for instance, that uh, it was a huge thing going on in the restaurant uh, universe, right? Like, because all those restaurants, local restaurants were shutting down and, and, and they, they didn't plan for that. And then most of them will, you know, run out of business. So Stella, which was the brand, uh, Stella Artois, focused on the, on the food territory, embraced that, that, that community. And then created a, a beautiful program that uh, it was designed, you know, to invite cons consumers to buy a dinner in your favorite local restaurant. Uh, but you're only going to be able to use that dinner, you know, once we're, we're open again. And, and, and the brand... Uh, pay, you know, half of your bill. And, and with that huge amount of money that was generated through that program, uh, uh, thousands of restaurants worldwide were able to have cash flow and don't shut out their, their doors. So this is just one example, but with ABI, we, we created this type of uh, platforms for the different brands embracing different points in society. Uh, and I think this is actually something uh, the pandemic accelerated, like the, the, the awareness in those companies that they need to find their the, the role in, uh, in society and, and, and do something meaningful and relevant in that space. Yes, and that's a great story. Thanks for sharing that. I mean, I I love that because that there were so many businesses that found themselves potentially irrelevant in those moments, right? Um, food service was one of them very hard hit because people couldn't go out to eat. And just the way you found a way to keep them relevant, like wait until the end here when you go back out to dinner <laughs> and enjoy enjoy a drink, uh, you know, with friends and family to help bring cash flow to them and to help a brand, um, you know, take advantage of that moment and be a solution in that moment. That's fantastic, John. I, I love that. Um, you, know, you also said I wanted to ask you about, which is something about helping people be creative in a consistent way. And sometimes when people think of creatives and creativity, they think, oh, there's no consistency. <laughs> but what do you mean by that? And how do you bring consistency to the creative world? Amazing question. So just, I, I'm just going to uh, do one step backward before answering answer this specific, which is uh, first, like to make it clear, this notion that creativity is something all of us have as a capability, right? All of us are creative. Uh, and it's something that uh, we can nurture, we can train, we can improve if we first are aware of this. And second, we, we have like the, the tools to, 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 to do this, right? So, uh, and, and, but, but now answering, what I've learned is that, you know, okay, everybody's creative, but there are a few uh, people, enterprises, uh, you know, uh, institutions, countries that somehow were able to create outstanding things in, in a consistent way. Right, so when you look at the Beatles, <laughs> when you look at Bob Dylan, when you look at uh, Kubrick, when you look at Banksy, when you look at Pixar, when you look at Apple, when you look at Israel as a country, or, or Silicon Valley. So, uh, actually, it's possible. It's possible for you to uh, somehow understand how to create outstanding things in a in a consistent way. And actually, also when we look back in, in society. We realize those ones 
are the ones that we uh, nominate as you know creative genius, like the, 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 those entities or those people who, who did that, right? Uh, and, and basically what, what I've learned in this journey is that they all did this because they uh, created a methodology to create a process, you know, to, to come up with uh, creative solutions uh, in, a, in, a frequent, in a frequent basis. Uh, and, and this is actually the, my biggest passion in life, is like trying to master this. So I spent the last 15 years like really studying this, this topic and winning is like a, a software solution born out of, of, out of this uh, research. Uh, and basically what I've learned at the end is exactly what I mentioned before, that the, what makes that possible is the ability for you to find where in culture, where in society, you as a person, as a talent, as a company, as a country, as a group of people, where you can add value, where you can play an authentic role, where you uh, can uh, be relevant. And, and once you uh, create that process, of constantly be mapping culture because again culture is liquid culture is dynamic so you need to uh, be a mapping culture on an ongoing basis and constantly evolving your self-awareness of what is this big thing that only you have uh, then you can create an amazing thing uh, in a consistent way so uh, this is actually like the big learning <laughs> That's great advice and awareness for people to, you know, recognize that you're, we're all creative. That's, that's the first thing I heard in all of this. And that, you know, there are ways to practice and provide yourself with the tools and some of the consistent methodologies so that you can figure out, like, what are you the solution to? You know, where do you want to create? What's the space that you want to play in? Um, and that's really good to hear, John, because I'm, uh, I'm working with some students uh, and entrepreneurial leadership, and they're all trying to figure that out right now, which is where they want to start a business and lead a business. And so I, I'm going to play this for them as inspiration. Um, so they know okay. like you will yeah. find it in yourself. It's fun. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I, and I really um, believe on this. So no, I'm uh, sorry. I was just to, to make that example. My, my dad, he always used, used to, to tell me this. He said, you know, uh, and, and something I, I, I observe right now in today's world is that many times people are trying to find, you know, what's hot right now? What, like, what, what's, what's, what's the trend of the day, right? And, and sometimes this quest or this obsession about, you know, trying to jump into the, today's conversation, um, uh, uh, you know, make people uh, don't look to themselves and, and look to their inner selves and to find, you know, what is unique about their own stories and unique about their own journeys and their own capabilities. First, to then look at what's hot in culture, what's trending, and, and then find the, the, the sweet spot. Because if you're just trying to jump in whatever is, is, is going on today or tomorrow, the chances for you to create something that is it's really authentic for you and will be unique uh, and original, it's, 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 it's hard. <laughs> so yeah, I'm sorry to compliment. I just want to make that. No, that, I mean, that's perfect. It fits totally with, with the kind of the, what I'm trying to convey with this podcast even, right? Which is that we all have something that's unique, special and different about us. And we need to look there first. Um, and I, I think that versus trying to be something else or be someone else or chase somebody else's trends, um, you know, it, it really does start with you and discovering more about yourself and, and and what that can be applied in so many different um, and so many different problems you can solve or businesses you can create and jobs you can uh, pursue. So I, I love it, Jean. Um, you and I are very much aligned. Um, and I and I think 100%. your dad sounds wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 100% yeah. aligned. Well, I, um, there's a part of every one of these shows where I ask a random question and you get to pick between one and 25 and I will tell you the question. So what number would you like? Okay. I, 
I've heard some some episodes before, so I'll try to get a number I haven't heard in the episode. So yeah. number seven, which is my favorite number. Seven. All right, let's do it. Um, oh, what is the best compliment you've ever received? Oh, that's a hard one. <laughs> oh, you know, uh, 100% sure it was from my kids. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. uh, I, 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 one year ago, uh, me and my, my ex-wife, we decided to, you know, follow different paths in a really uh, positive way. We are friends and all that. So since then, I have half of my week a single dad and and, and and my kids see you know how how hard I'm working to be a good dad so uh, and, and, and be with them in the journey and I'm really enjoying uh, having more time with them and all that and, and another day uh, my 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 daughter uh, who's just did five years old she uh, just told me you know so that you know you are really my best friend. Uh, and she would just thank you. She was, I just want to thank you for being this guy. So I think that was like the most beautiful compliment I've heard. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's, that is the best compliment. I, <laughs> those are the ones that you can take with you. Right. And you'll remember forever. Um, I remember my dad uh, came, took me to lunch one day and said, you're a really great mom. And, and that, stuck with me because I think that's what matters most to me at the end of the day. Um, <laughs> and I needed to hear that. You know, I don't, I want to, you know, I care about being good at many things. Um, but that's what I care the most about. So I love that your daughter said that. And, um, you know, we all need to hear that we're, we're doing a good job in this parenting space. So <laughs> thanks for sharing oh, that. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, it's hard. <laughs> it is hard. Nobody tells you that, right? Like, I mean, it's just like, the, where's where's that in school? <laughs> so it's like, we need that. Um, well, John, I, uh, you know, I think I like to do watching the show is a nonprofit and an organization that you care about and that, you know, you want can bring attention to. And I don't even want to try to say the name uh, correctly, so I'm going to let you uh, tell us a little bit about the nonprofit that you're supporting. Absolutely. So uh, there is, as you can imagine, in Brazil, one of the most challenging uh, things we need to overcome in society is the social differences, right? And specifically uh, the, the poverty. So, and I think, of course, this is something going on all over the world but uh, here in Brazil there's like this guy his name is Edu Lira he'll be in South by Southwest uh, this year uh, uh, by the way and uh, he created this, this uh, organization that calls uh, Gerando Falcon, Falcões which means uh, creating falcons okay? which um, is focused on uh battling poverty <laughs> so putting together uh, different NGOs organizations institutions to really uh, tackle this problem and but the, the the thing that really inspired me about everything they are doing is how innovative they be, uh, uh, be, they, they, how, how they've been doing this in an innovative way. So just recently during COVID, they created uh, the biggest uh, donation campaign ever in the history of Brazil, helping millions of people here to, uh, you know, don't uh, went through these hard times uh, without food, uh, to start with the basic. Uh, and, and beyond this, they do a great work on, on educate, on, on providing top education uh, and professionalization for, for people who lives in, in this uh, context. So, Gerando Falcões, uh, this will be uh, my, 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 my input here for you guys. Well, thank you for raising awareness. And, you know, you're right, poverty is an issue around the world. And I love that you're tackling it there in Brazil. 
and creating falcons. That's that's a lovely kind of metaphor for what um, you're trying to do. Please, everyone, uh, visit uh, the site and you can click with your phone if you're on YouTube on the QR code that you see on the screen right now. And it goes right to the page. Uh, you can donate, you can get involved, minimally bring awareness to the issues of poverty and helping people emerge from uh, poverty. So please do that and find ways to do the same in your own communities. It's a problem we all fight in our different countries and I especially wanna raise awareness to the work going on in so, Jean, tell us what's next. You talked about bringing the business to the U.S. What else are you doing these days? Yeah, so uh, we've launched first the software in Brazil. But from here, we ended up with a lot of global clients that are based in, in New York, Atlanta, California. And now, like 16 months later, we are really focusing on, on, on launching the software in, in the United States. So in the next months, I'll be around. So I hope to visit you for sure in, in California. Uh, uh, so this is this is just there, it's the next step. Uh, we are seeing a lot of uh, entertainment companies, brands, creative agencies, top creators, MCNs, they all really, uh, getting in love about the technology we create, so we're really excited about this. Uh, and then beyond this, uh, I, I'm also uh, gonna be launching my podcast in the United States. I have a podcast in Brazil, uh, and the name of the podcast is the the Creative Secrets, where we share a little bit of the uh, you know this, this the, the process, the science behind uh, great creative people uh, and companies out there. So we'll be launching this, you, you, you're you gonna be invited for sure to, to participate there. So that's it, that's, going to, that's what's going on right now. <laughs> Thank you, I, I cannot wait. One, I cannot wait for you to come visit. Two, I cannot wait to hear your podcast and, and listen to it. Uh, so please, will you send me all the details as you um, you know get going and you launch into the U.S. so that I can promote it here and and through all of our social media? I would love that. Um, and Jean, I've so enjoyed catching up. With I sir, me too. Uh, I miss uh, seeing your face. Yes. Um, and uh, I'm very excited about everything that you're doing. I'm glad we got to catch up today and that you joined me on the show. Thank you. Thank you again, Jen. Congrats about the, you know, the show and everything you've done and you keep doing. So looking forward for your next uh, chapters also. Uh, and let's be together. Yes, Count on me. That's perfect. Sounds good. I can't wait it. Um, well, everyone, that's going to be the end of today's show. It's been a pleasure having Jean on the show. Please subscribe to seeinfreestudio.com. All of you listening in Brazil, love to have you uh, be part of our listening community. And we will see you soon.